Welcome to Pimpy's Investment Chat, where we keep investment talk simple. And here's your host, Pimpy. What is going on out there, peeps? All right, some potentially good news for Iraq that could affect the Iraqi dinar. We'll go over that in detail so I can explain to you the pros and cons. To me, it, it is a good sign and it is good news. So let's hear up and let's get into this. Before we get started, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not a subscriber, please do so because when you do, it helps out the channel and I certainly do appreciate it. You can follow me over on other platforms. I do have a, my own group over on Facebook called Pimby's Investment Chat. Over here, we do talk about gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, as well as foreign currency investments. So head on over here and join us. It's free to do so. In here, I do post updates if I should get on suspension from YouTube or get removed from YouTube. And you want to know what happened to me, I'll let you know right here in this group. I can be found on Twitter, MeWe, YouTube. And the cool thing about YouTube, if you come over here and you join and you find my channel, I got videos going back, I believe, a couple years. So if you want to see some older videos that I have on Nisera Jacera, Gold, Silver, Cryptos, come on over here and join. Look me up and check out my videos. You can also find me on Odyssey, catch me on Rumble. When I say that the links for all these are down below in the description, some of you don't know what I'm talking about, it's real simple. To go down to the bottom right here of any of my videos, see this, this is the description. Hit show more, and there are all the links to all the platforms I just spoke about. Okay, so Al Sidini gave a speech. He wanted everybody to know that Iraq will be active in the gas market. And Turkey is one of those affected by stopping oil exports. So Al Sidini was just letting the world know they plan on being very active in the oil and gas industry. That he's going to be committed to the agreements of OPEC and OPEC plus countries in a way that preserves the interests of producers and consumers. And Iraq's production capabilities will be part of these understandings. He said we will be a direct part of our oil production to operate refineries outside Iraq. And we discussed this matter with Bulgaria, and there are refineries in China and Malaysia. We seek, a, we seek a reasonable price for oil that guarantees the interests of the producer and consumers. We do not have a fixed price, and we believe that the appropriate price is no less than $85 to $90 per barrel, which would save their butt if they could keep it that way for a little while. Remember, in their budget, they had forecasted it at $65 or higher, so that would be a good safe range. He pointed out that there are fills announced within the six rounds of natural gas investment, and there is another round of fills being developed, considering that Iraq will be an active country in the gas market. Um, the crazy thing is there are some oils that they found out in the desert that they still have not spoke about yet, and I'm wondering why. He went on to say that we are awaiting the measures of the Turkish side to resume exports via the Turkish line, especially oil produced in the Kurdistan region, and it will be within the general policy of the state. He said there are mutual complaints in the International Court of Arbitration, but we are negotiating with the Turkish side to separate the export appeal from the legal issues in the court. So we know there are a lot of American companies that are working with Kurdistan in their oil fields. I know they're eager to expand out into more of Iraq. They would love to get their hands on some of these oil fields or work with Iraq on, in these oil fields. So there are a lot of companies uh, jockeying, trying to get in there and get some of these licenses. Now, this is going to get interesting. You'll see why here in a minute. Regarding the presence of foreign forces in Iraq, al Sadini said, Our official position is declared which is that there is no need for any foreign military presence or combat forces in Iraq. We have security services capable of imposing security. This is going to be big. He continued, we are in dialogue about the future of the relationship with the international coalition, and we are discussing with the United States formulas of bilateral cooperation away from the coalition, and it is on the table with all countries in the region and the world. This is going to tie into the authorization that the United States is talking about reversing. So I think what you're going to see is a modified version of the authorization for military use. And a modification will be that the United States can be involved wherever they spot ISIS. And that's about it. So Iraq is fourth in the air world by possessing the lion's share of gold reserves. I always love to hear that. So right now, Iraq is holding 132.6 tons of gold. 
You notice that these nations are still buying up large quantities of gold, which is a good sign. I'd love for everybody to go back into the gold standard. It said the past years have witnessed a desire by central banks around the world to buy the precious metals in light of economic fluctuations and high inflation rates. According to the previous report, demand jumped its highest levels in 11 years in 2022, thanks to central banks recording their largest purchases ever. Remember what I said, don't do what they say, do what they do. You should be buying precious metals. Now, this here is what I was talking about that's kind of a biggie. So the House of Representatives will hold a session next week to cancel the authorization for the invasion of Iraq. So there are some pros and cons to this. So let me talk about this just a little bit. So this reversal of the authorization to use military force in Iraq has an effect on the Iraqi currency. There's both pros and cons. It really just depends on Iraq. We all know that the situation in Iraq is unstable. I know everybody likes to tell you in their videos that they're very stable, but they're not. With the country facing numerous challenges, uh, including political instability, uh, you know, there's always ISIS running around there. You have to deal with terrorism, uh, economic struggles. The Iraqi economy has been heavily reliant on oil exports, which has made it vulnerable to fluctuations in the oil prices. The value of the Iraqi dinar has also been affected by those same factors as well as by international sanctions and other geopolitical events. So this reversal could help in these regards. I mean, one of the main reasons Iraqi's economy has struggled in recent years is, po is political instability, as well as tensions between Baghdad and Erbil. Uh, those have disrupted the economic activities and they scare off investors. If the authorization were reversed, it could help reduce political instability and create more stable environment for investors and economic growth. Because then that means a lot of these countries that are not allies or friends with America, you know, they won't feel so threatened. So you'll have a much more variety of foreign investors coming in. We also have to take in consideration that Iraq has had strained relations with several of its neighbors, particularly Iran and Kuwait. Those have had negative impacts on trade and economic cooperation. And this, of course, has hurt the Iraqi economy. But if the authorization is reversed, it could help improve relations with these countries, leading to increased trade, economic cooperation. And that, of course, would have a positive impact on the Iraqi dinar. Now, here's where the cons could be. If this authorization is reversed, it could lead to economic sanctions being imposed by the U.S. and other countries. But I think Iraq has come a long ways. I'm worried about the vacuum that it might cause there without the U.S.'s protection. So I could see a scenario maybe where the uh, United States is going to make a modified version of this authorization. But the cool thing is this. If this authorization is reversed, this actually would give Iraq their full sovereignty. That means they're on their own. There's no more training wheels. There's no more kid gloves. So if they get attacked by Islamic terrorists, you know, then we have to start all over from square one. And that's not what we want. So like I was saying, this reversal of the authorization could have both a positive and a negative impact on the currency. I like to believe that there won't be any sanctions from the United States. We know there are three sanctions still remaining. We know that the U.S. has dollarized their currency over there in Iraq. Uh, the U.S. dollar is widely used as a medium of exchange in Iraq, and many transactions are denominated in U.S. dollars rather than Iraqi dinar. We know that Iraq has taken steps to de-dollarize, but they still do trade in U.S. dollars. So maybe once this is reversed, they could just do business in Iraqi dinars. One of the other sanctions is uh, capital controls. The uh, Central Bank of Iraq has imposed strict capital controls that are there to limit the amount of foreign currency that can be exchanged for the NARS. Uh, this has made it difficult for Iraqis to access their own money held in foreign currencies or to transfer funds abroad, which we see them working on that right now. And so the last sanction is uh, limited access to international financial systems. Iraq has been excluded from the global financial system due to U.S. sanctions which has limited its ability to access international markets and it has made it difficult for foreign investors to participate in their country's economy. So with the reversal of this authorization, this can all change. You might actually see a pretty big jump in the Iraqi dinar. Now, I don't want to promise anything and I don't want to blow smoke up people's butt, 
but it has the potential to have a really big positive impact on the Iraqi dinar. We know the Iraqi dinar is much more valuable currency. Now, how much of an impact it's going to have on the Iraqi dinar remains to be seen. Like I said, I don't want to promise anything, but I think then we could see some much bigger jumps in value if outside investors start coming in because the authorization has been reversed. If these restrictions are removed off of the Iraqi dinar, then we can see some huge jumps. We know that they've been working on reforming their banking system so that it could work with international financial systems. So if they de-dollarize, get rid of the capital controls, and they can have access to international financial systems, outside investors would come from all over to invest in Iraq. You could see the Iraqi dinar jump up pretty good. Anyways, you guys, let me know what you think. Do you think this reversal of this authorization is going to have any impact on the Iraqi dinar? If so, I absolutely think it will, but we will see. That's really going to depend on Iraq. Anyways, that's it for now. I look forward to your comments, and I'll get back at you later. I'm out.